Uh, I'm Steve Champaglia, and along, I'm a professor of art education at Northern Illinois University, and along with Kerry Richardson right here, who's faculty, uh, studio faculty in the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. We're the co-founders and co-directors of the Plug-In Studio. Uh, the Plug-In Studio is an autonomous, self-contained, and entirely portable studio. We provide art and technology programming for underserved children, uh, adolescents, and families. In Chicago, we partner with community organizations to offer these programs. And um, our approach essentially uh, it emphasizes the aesthetic of art and technology. It connects personal expression to making and integrates design with engineering and program. Here you can see a picture of me and um, I believe my teaching assistant, I turn away, my teaching assistant somewhere in there. Uh, this is working uh, with a group of students at the High Park Art Center, which is a neighborhood in Chicago. And um, anyway, uh, what we also are is we're a pedagogy and curriculum incubator. So we are learning as we go along, uh, offering these programs, uh, finding what projects work best, how to tweak them, offering them again, refining them again. Uh, so from this, we're hoping to develop projects that, that are, have, are successful, and from that, a whole curriculum. And this curriculum is designed for uh, teachers uh, who teach art in K-12 uh, school settings and also community settings. So um, what are some of the programs that we offer? Well, we have, well, here, I'll let you just see it. So this was a, an, a, an interactive sculpture made by a young woman in one of our classes. Uh, it was using the Pico Cricket. Is that anyone familiar with the Pico Cricket? It's, yeah, it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, anyway, the Pico Cricket is like Lego Mindstorms, and it was also made by the same research group, uh, Lifelong Kindergarten at the MIT Media Lab who made Lego Mindstorms, an outgrowth of Seymour Papert's work. Um, and so, essentially, it's like the cricket, except it emphasizes uh, art, art and design. And so you have sensors, and you have outputs, and so this young woman uh, actually created um, this sculpture with a cricket, programmed it, programmed the sound, uh, created the structure and used and found object. In fact, the, uh, the, one of the, um, the challenges we gave the students in this, uh, for this activity was to find an object and to make an interactive sculpture out of it. Uh, and they were, we, I showed them examples of the work of Arthur Ganson, who is an art professor at MIT who uses found objects in his mechanical sculptures. Uh, we've also done video game classes, but we like to emphasize again the design aspect. So, this, so the students in this class made 8-bit games uh, using Scratch in the style of old Atari 2600 8-bit games. And so this is Camp Cadaver. And, uh, and so this, he, this young man actually programmed it so you had two, it's a two-player game. So it was pretty sophisticated. And uh, if it was to keep going on, like thousands of the zombie cadavers come out. And you can never win. And so the other, and, and that's actually, um, it's, that's what we call, what's called in the art world an art game, which is a game that plays around with conventions of video games. And one thing it plays around with is this idea that you can never, you can never win. It's an endless game. So, as, uh, and so anyway, then this is a work made in one of our art maker spaces. So I'll just let it play for a second. And this is using little bits. So, um, so, prob so the lat latest endeavor was a series of art maker spaces that we hosted uh, in various communities in Chicago. And those art maker spaces were drop in, they were pop up. We used little bits and cardboard. And they were probably in many ways the most successful program that we had because we were able to get solicit young women to participate and engage more so than in our regular classes. We're not sure why that is, but, um, it, but it, it, it was the case. And so this piece was made by two young women. They weren't even, they weren't even adolescents. One was, one was high school and one was middle school, working with their father. Uh, they're Latino, in the Latino community in Chicago. And he was, uh, he was an engineer, correct? And so, um, so he, when he came into that maker space and he saw that, he, that we were introducing skills to them that he was familiar with, he was all excited because he could make this with his daughters. And that's really the point of what we do is we are actually introducing to these young people in these communities 
skills and technologies that they actually otherwise would not get an opportunity to engage with. Thank you. <laughs>